Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at using chance and randomness in composing music. And to help with this, Qubit Electronics have very kindly sent their latest module, Chance. This particular module is based around the idea of flipping coins to make decisions, which was used by John Cage in a lot of his work. And he used the outcomes of these coin flips to determine things like tempos and volume changes and instruments coming in and out. And I feel that there's a strong connection between this use of randomness and control voltage and using control voltage voltage to trigger envelopes, to again change tempo, volume, cause sequences to happen. And personally for me when I'm playing on the modular synthesizer a lot of the composition happens beforehand in that I'm building a system or a patch which I generally know the outcome of and then when I come to play it or perform it I will tweak the parameters so I'm not necessarily notating pitches and rhythms. Instead, I'm using chance and randomness within a framework that I've built, and that's how I create my music. So let's have a look at some examples. So looking at the chance module here, at the top we have four different continuous voltages. So let's demonstrate um, what those do. Let's just put chord into the mixer. Very nice. And let's try, we have smooth here, and that ramps smoothly between different values which are seeded every time a coin is flipped. So maybe if we bring that tempo down a bit, we'll be able to hear, there you go, the smooth ramping. Next we have discrete, and this steps between different volumes like that. Wavetable is a bit more exciting. Um, it has a lookup table of different LFOs. So that can be a bit more manic than the others. And finally we have a blend. And with this blend we can blend between the different uh, sources at the top. So perhaps we want a bit of discrete and a bit of wavetable. We can just put them in the middle there and it will average them. And then if we go to full blend, it will average all of the voltages. And then if we set up a little envelope here using maths, and we can use some of the bottom sources to trigger it. So let's just use the clock for now, see what that sounds like. Oops. So very steady, as you might expect. And then we have burst mode. There you go. So that gives a bit more randomization, a bit more chaos, a bit more interest. And then over on the right here, we have rhythm. So you get different multiplications and divisions of the clock. So that's very good also for rhythmic pulses. And then at the bottom here you've just got white and digital noise, so you know what those sound like, but we can just give it a go. White noise. And digital noise. And so you can see this coin toss paradigm. Um, every time this light flashes it means a coin has been tossed or a whole new set of voltages are coming out of the sources. And we can freeze them. So let's put cord back in. And let's just use the discrete to influence the volume. And then if we toss the coin, then we'll be given a new value. Or if you unfreeze it, every clock pulse, it will toss a coin on its own. So let's see how these can be used. First of all, I'm going to take the root and the third from the chord. In fact, let's get the fifth as well. 
Very nice. And let's use some of these at the bottom here to trigger envelopes. So if we go from burst and use that to trigger an envelope and we'll go to rhythm as well, use that to trigger a different envelope. And if we now plug these in to the mixer, three different rhythms going on and you can easily see how this could be used for drums and percussion with like a hi-hat bass drum and snare for example so that's quite an easy way to generate patterns if we change how often the coin is tossed, we are basically affecting the tempo. Now what happens if we want to change the pitch? Well, let's take the smooth output and plug that into a quantizer. Now we can take the quantized output of this smooth voltage, put it into voltage corruptive, and we get a melody. Bit of a crazy melody. Let's see what discrete's like. That might be a bit... A bit cleaner. I think we need to change the, the scale. And if that's a bit too crazy, we can kind of tame it with the attenuator. Sounds a bit better. Let's see what the wavetable will do. Pretty crazy. Wow. And what about the blend? <laughs> nice. And if we had a bit of reverb? Perhaps let's change the envelope a little bit. And one trick which is quite useful is if you set up these kinds of uh, pitch or melody systems and then smooth them out with a lot of reverb to the point where you start not to hear distinct notes you can get quite a nice pad effect going on it's perhaps a bit too high quite nice and atmospheric. For this kind of pad, I think it's less important for, again, there to be specific pitches, but uh, more of a, a chord kind of atmosphere going on. So that's just one example of how you can use chants to generate different rhythms and patterns, as well as using it to control pitch. Let's see what else we can do.
Okay, so what I've got here is a little patch that's using rings and chord, both driven by chance. So here we've got the uh, rhythm output being malted uh, to trigger an envelope, which is going in to control the volume of chord. And we've also got that same signal strumming rings. So pretty simple right now. So how can we make this more interesting? Well, why don't we take the smooth output and affect the timbre of the sound. So let's use dampening. And there, already we're getting some much more aggressive sounds by just changing the damping using a simple smooth voltage. So what more can we do though? Well, let's take the discrete and uh, let's put that into brightness. And again, we're getting a bit more interest, a bit more variation. But I think there's more we can do. So let's try taking the blend of those two and put that into position. Yeah, there you go. It's a much more interesting kind of evolving sound. And together, because we've malted the same signal, the chord and the rings kind of sound like one full sound instead of two separate ones. But I still think there's more we can do with this chord. So why don't we take this disc discrete signal and malt that out. So we'll put one, let's use a blue, put one back into damping, oh sorry, brightness. So that's as it was. But let's put the other through to the waveform. Maybe if we put a little bit of reverb, smooth it out a bit. So that's quite nice, but everything's going at the same uh, pattern. So why don't we add something else to counter it. Um, I'm going to use this sample player here, put it through a distortion. And here we've just got a sample of birds. So if we, uh, if we bypass the distortion for now, turn off the reverb. Just a sample of birds, but if we distort that, it starts to sound a lot more crazy and mangled and a bit more interesting. So let's try using the burst output here. I think that would go well with the kind of hectic mangled sounds. If we use the burst output to trigger an envelope, which then goes into the level. starts to sound a bit like a hi-hat. If we kind of mix these together, we start to get some really interesting rhythms going on.
there you have it. So all of these are being driven just by this chance. Fantastic. So far we've been using chants at quite high tempos for generating different patterns and kind of melodic phrases. Why don't we see what it's like with some more gentle changes. So if we put chord into the mixer. And let's use smooth to create some nice kind of swells and fades. Very gentle. That's nice. That just gives a bit of life to the signal. So what if we add some more life and go from discrete into the waveform, add a bit more variation. Um, perhaps we might want to add a little bit of reverb just to smoothen things out a little bit between the changes. And now I think this would benefit from a bit more change to make it interesting. So why don't we get the blend and put that into the voicing to get some kind of pitch changes going on. So you get some lovely swells going on. And we can even, let's see if this will work, get the wavetable and put that into the blend of the reverb. Let's see how that affects things. Get some swelling reverb now. to advance we can always just press the coin toss button and I feel like you could just listen to that for a very long time slowly evolving changing maybe switching around some of these changing the blend to different waveforms and just experimenting and that's really what it's about is experimenting and allowing these kind of processes and modules to just push you in new directions and ones that you might not necessarily have discovered otherwise that's what I really like about using randomness and chance increasing music and if I had a sequencer or a brains for this pressure points I could take perhaps the clock um, and use that to step through these sequences and send these tuned voltages out, again creating a kind of more gradual change. So that's using chance for some slower, more gradual changes. That's all we have time for in this video, but we've only just scratched the surface of what can be done with chance and randomness when writing music. For more examples, I definitely recommend um, a lot of the work by John Cage and In C by Terry Riley. I think those are really, really good examples of how randomness can be used to make interesting compositions that change each time. And one more thing, I've recently released a collection of tracks on Bandcamp. It's some of the music that I've been creating over the past few months. It's mostly kind of droney and ambient, so if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, I'd appreciate checking it out. And that's all we have time for, so thanks very much, and I'll see you later. Bye!